Hey everyone, it's Kirk McLean here, and you're watching Clay's Canucks Commentary. Sneak peek. Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary Live, presented to you by Van City Experts Real Estate. I am Canuck Clay, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It is... Tuesday night, October the 24th. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for Daily Canucks Insight. That's positive, timely, and trustworthy. If you can hear it in my voice, I am battling a cold. I actually woke up in a horrible uh, state this morning, fought it for the entirety of the day, ended up doing game, uh, game Over Vancouver with Parker. He did a great job for his first time as a host. And um, then I try not to talk too much throughout the day. I try to rest my voice. So I, I wanted to do this show. And as you know, Tuesday night's my, my prayer hour. So I have to cut this at 40 minutes for sure. But it doesn't matter. We are here tonight. My voice is going to crack like I'm a five-year-old boy a few times throughout the stream. But that's okay. I know you'll forgive me. And I know that you do not judge me just as I don't judge you. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here. Moderators, do what you need to do. Members, as legends, Hall of Fame and franchise members, thanks for your support. And to everyone else, no matter where you're watching from, whether my beautiful neighborhood of Steveston and Richmond, in the city, lower mainland, province, country, continent, or around the world, thank you for being here. You know that I know that you could be doing anything else, watching anyone else, getting ready for work, school, or bed. But the fact that you are here with me right now, I always appreciate you, and I never take you for granted. So as I do my intro, why don't you type in the chat where you are watching from tonight. You guys know how much I love to see that. I love to for all of you to learn from others where you're watching from. As you get going, I invite you to subscribe so you can get active in the chat section and you get notified of my videos every single day. I invite you to like this video. There's 50 of you in here. There's only nine likes, so let's get that up to at least 20. And like the fact that we are together, like the fact that Canucks are four and two, second in the division, and coming home on a two-game win streak. Also, you can leave a donation and get the donation train out of the station. You can gift a membership, which is the same as a $5 donation and get someone franchise membership for a month. By the way, we're 125 members, which is pretty awesome. And I have a member stream tomorrow. So hopefully you can join me for that. I'll tell you about that more a little bit in a little bit. You can also buy your own membership, upgrade your own membership. Or if you're listening on a podcast platform, make sure you rate and review. So for tonight, and yes, Bruce, you can go streaking. I will not join you. I'm trying to get rid of this cold. I'm not sure if streaking would be the smartest thing for me in my state right now. But we'll put it up there just so uh, just so we can acknowledge that this is what you want to do, Bruce. And OG, OG from, from Twitter. And Jasper says he's watching from my house, which would mean that you're in the closet there with Patrick Alvin. That didn't sound right. Anyways, this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk about tonight's game. There's crack number one. You guys can keep uh, track in the in the chat. That was crack voice crack number one. We're going to talk about the game. Then we'll talk about where the Canucks sit in the division. And then I'll basically turn it over to you. And then, yeah, I might only go 35 or 40 minutes tonight just to rest my voice. But we'll see what happens. And just before we get to everything, am I going to – I will likely not stream on Friday or Saturday because I'm going to be at both games. I'm going to be at the Friday night game against the Blues – I can be at the Saturday night game against the Rangers. I already know that on the Friday night against after the Blues game, I have to go out to Burnaby uh, to to take care of something. So, um, yeah, maybe maybe we. Uh, I don't think I'll be streaming Friday and Saturday. And Sarah, um, wishing me a speedy recovery. Thank you. I always appreciate appreciate the the kind comments as well as I try and get better. Let's get going by recognizing this membership gift. Thank you. Thank you to legendary Carol Bovenlander with the Canuck Clay membership gift. And it goes to Owen Grams, a name I haven't seen before. So let's give some love to Carol and let's give uh, a warm welcome to Owen. 
So thank you, Carol. Always appreciate you. Thank you a, a very much. A legend. And I want to address, not address, ad every time I say I want to address something, doesn't that sound way too serious? Like it sounds like I'm, I, it's basically like a, a dad moment. So I, I do want to acknowledge this comment. Um, love the question from Michelle. And Michelle says, 11 p.m. is very late. Any chance you can start at 10 p.m. in the future? Michelle, great question. And um, respectfully, you're probably relatively new on this channel. 11 o'clock is like my sweet spot. It's um, It usually means I'm home from a work event. It means I'm home from a Canucks game. It's just on Friday, Saturday, I usually don't stream. But if I'm at a weeknight game, I can get home. It also gives me time to do um, game over and just get some studying in. And I want to fill that void that sports page used to do, fill for the, for those of you that are my age or a tiny bit younger who remember sports page, or you might remember Sportsnet connected. And by eleven o'clock, all the games are done, and we've had a chance to um, to kind of relax. Yes, it is very late. I, I acknowledge that, especially for people not from the Pacific time zone. Unless you're watching from Hawaii, then you're laughing because it's nine p.m. But if you're watching in Vancouver, it's already eleven, and if you're watching anywhere east, it's midnight one, sometimes two a.m. I get that, but I also know that my own schedule, there simply be too many nights when I wouldn't when I wouldn't be ready to stream by 10, but I'm always ready to stream by 11. So Michelle, I hope that makes sense. I hope that answers you uh, properly, uh, um, uh, fairly, and people here, yeah, it's weird. 11 o'clock is really late, but we have 90 people in this chat. Hopefully it gets over 100. A lot of times it gets over 100, but Michelle, I appreciate you. Um, yeah, I appreciate you asking. And yeah, people like uh, Bruce Remember Sports Page and Don Taylor for sure. But thank you, Michelle. No problem in asking. Ashish, I just mentioned this, but maybe you weren't here. I'm going to both Friday and Saturday, but I'll talk about that more at the break. And BC Beastly, yes, I'll talk about that at the break as well. Let's talk about oh, 7 p.m. for Murray in New Zealand. So this is this is early. Let's talk about tonight's game. The Canucks are four and two. It took them to early November to win their fourth game of the season last year, but they are four and two comfortably, well, at least sole possession of second place in the Pacific division. So they are four and two. Yeah, she's thank you. Um, I, I'm, I'm not always the best at it, but I, I understand the importance of pronouncing names properly. But if, if you've never said it before, then that's understandable. But you you won't imagine how much I get. Um, I say emo. It's actually emo -o as my last name because you pronounce every O, every syllable. But I say emo, but I a lot of get I moo and emu just because of the way it's spelled. But that's okay. The Canucks win three to two. It brings their road, uh, road trip record to three and two. It brings their overall record to four and two which is what the Canucks score would have been if Elias Pettersson knew how to empty hit an empty net and you guys know that I I half jokingly half serious I predict a Canucks win of four to two from game one until they actually win four to two and then I actually make real predictions last year it didn't happen until game 38 a January home game against Colorado where the Canucks actually won four to two and tonight we had a chance to had a chance to go with a 4-2 victory in game number six, but it just didn't happen. So shots on goal were 24 to 17, as you can see. Um, Face-offs, Nashville had a slight edge. What I really liked here is the Canucks went three for three on their penalty kill. They only got one power play, and that was at the end of the game. Uh, hits were relatively even. Nashville blocked a lot of shots, so that shot total could have been even more. Very quickly, the goals... Mikheyev gets his first of the season. A nice play by Kuzmenko on the boards. Draws two Nashville Predators to him. Does one of those quick touch passes. And Mikheyev drags it over to the left. Takes a shot. It wasn't really a strong shot. But I think it went off Roman Yossi's um, stick. Whatever it did, it, it, it surprised UC Saros. And the Canucks are up one nothing just four and a half minutes into the game. Now... Sissons ties it up. Uh, uh, the Canucks had all the momentum in the first period. And then Susie, who didn't have the best game, he played it up the boards and uh, trying to get to Petey, but Sissons blocked the, the clearing pass. It was a good play. 
And then Susie did not have time to get to Sissons. Sissons comes in big time shot over Demko's right shoulder, bar down. Demko had no chance. And it's 1 1 after 1. Second period, the Canucks, as you know, had a horrible second period in games two, three, and four, but their second period was decent against Florida on Saturday. And they had a good second period today. D. Giuseppe, this, this was weird. Hughes kind of um, lifted it out from his own zone. It gets the Nastro Predators defenseman. It bounces off him and bounces off Besser. They're all hacking and whacking at it. And then it gets to D. Giuseppe in front of the net. He didn't even have a chance to, to settle the puck or, or stick handle. He just kind of chopped at it. And it got past Soros, and now it's two to one. Great to see DJ Giuseppe get that goal. He's he does he works so hard. He does a lot of the uh, the little things well, but it's nice to see him to see him rewarded with a goal. Then Hoglander, a nice tip, Hughes and Hronick, Hronick to Hughes. Hughes gets his point shot through. And what I really liked about this goal, and I talked about this on Game Over, it was was you had Hoglander and Lafferty in front of the net screening Soros. I'm not sure how many players you need in front of the net, but it worked. Maybe uh, Lafferty was kind of distracting Charles. And then Hoglander with a nice tip. And now it's 3-1. Then a few minutes later, Sherwood, Kiefer Sherwood, not Kyle Sherwood, Kiefer Sherwood, who uses a CCM stick, according to Parker, he scores a, yeah, a one-timer, really nice shot from the from the Ovechkin spot, so to speak. And he beats Thatcher Demko. And then that's it for the scoring. In the third period, so you see the Canucks had a really good second period. I was shooting Nashville 13 to 4. In the third period, the Canucks um, were outshot 7 to 5. It was a scrambly third period, but I said to Parker on Canucks After Dark, I never felt like the Canucks were in danger of losing the game. It just seemed like a game. You might you might not agree with me. Oh, yes, the Triple H goal. That's right. Hoglander from Hughes and Hronick. Triple H. They actually made a John Shorthouse made a Triple H comment on the on the show and then and then Dave Thomas said, "Oh, a wrestling references, or a wrestling reference." And then Shorthouse said, "Yeah, two on this road trip." Because remember, he talked about the Fabus Mula when that Zamula guy, who I've never heard of, scored for Philly back way back last Tuesday. Anyways, anyways, uh, so a little bit scrambling in third period, the Canucks had to kill off back to back power plays for Nashville. Then the Canucks got their own power play, but they they took a more defensive stance to protect the lead. And then, yeah, I, I'm not going to rag on Elias Pedersen. It's it's fine. Um, his first attempt at the empty net from the neutral zone hit the post. So it's not like he completely missed the net. Hit the post. What was funny is he kind of did one of those threw his head back because he was probably disappointed. Meanwhile, Nash uh, Nash was going the other way, so he quickly hustled back to to get into play. And then because of that and the good play of his teammates, he got another chance at the empty net. This one almost from the same spot, and this one he didn't even hit the net. It went wide. Whatever it would be nice to for the Canucks to seal it, but the Canucks still won three to two. And PD was uh, yeah didn't get his his goal unfortunately. Bruce is true. There's a hundred over 105 watching, 30 likes. We can bump that up for sure. Now let's look at the Canucks box score real quick. You had the goals coming from Huglander, like I said, his second season, and then DJ Seppi and then Kev is their first, and then nothing stands out too crazy from. There's simply not a lot of goals. And then from the hit standpoint in the forwards, you had Garland, the smallest guy. He had four hits, led the team in forwards. And then you had Hoglander with three shots. And then uh, McKay with four shots on goal. Bovilli with three shots. And then ice time, only uh, Hoglander was under 10 minutes. Then Lafferty was only 10.45. Garland, 11.44. And then Bovilli at 12.08. On D, look at this. A couple of things. Both Hughes and Ronick, one assist. Both of them plus two, and a combined 53 minutes of ice time between the two of them, which is massive. Then that doesn't leave a lot of ice time for anyone else. You actually have Ian Cole with another 23 minutes. So the top three guys um, get 27, 25, and 23 minutes. So they're using up uh, about 75 minutes combined between the three of them. That only leaves then 45 minutes for the other three. And that's why Friedman gets 15 and a half, Susie gets 14, and Myers gets under 14. So second game in a row. Second game in a row that Myers only gets 13 minutes of ice time, but he was paired on the third pairing tonight, so that makes a lot of sense, especially if you are going to ride Hughes and Hronick, which I am absolutely fine them doing so. Demko, nice to get his second win of the season in his fourth game. We know that DeSmith has won both of his outings, but Demko uh, gets his win, so his first win since 
opening night, that 8-1 victory over Edmonton. So I'd say the bottom line for this game for the Vancouver Canucks is they played solid. They weren't amazing, but they played solid. Their JT Miller and Elias Pettersson did not get any points. But if you call D. Giuseppe, even though he's on the second line, a depth scorer, if you call Hoglander, definitely a depth scorer, it was nice that the that the depth players came to play. And that's something that Parker and I talked about on on Game Over a lot was that um, was that the bottom six played really well. I remember a shift in the second period where the Joshua, Suter, and Garland line dominated for, for a minute or so. I remember a shift in the third in the third period where the fourth line of Lafferty, Hoglander, and Bovillier actually dominated. So they don't dominate all game. That's not their role. But if they can hold their own, if the third and fourth line do not get scored on and they can actually dominate play for stretches, then I think that's a good thing. And that's what we saw tonight from the team. You look at the standings, the Canucks are in second place in the division. Second place outright. When I say that, that means no one can catch up to them with games in hand. So you have Vegas 7 0. They're, they're the cream of the crop, obviously, in the Pacific. You have Vancouver at 4 and 2, comfortably with eight points. LA, six games played, seven points. And then look, even these teams that have played fewer games or more games in the Canucks. So Calgary, there. look at Calgary and Seattle. Seattle um, and Calgary both at 357 points percentage. Then you have Anaheim at two and four. You have Edmonton at one, four and one, and San Jose. So obviously this is a surprise, Edmonton. We want Seattle and and, and Calgary to, to be worse than us. So I really like where we are. And then that eight points puts us second in the division. It puts us sit fourth in the in the conference, which is nice, and it actually puts us overall in the league, tied for sixth place with three other teams: the Rangers, Toronto, and Tampa. And Rangers and Toronto have the exact same record as us at four and two. But the only teams that are better than us, the three teams that are undefeated: Vegas, Boston, Colorado, then Detroit, a very surprising team, and Dallas, a very good team. So if you look at the top ten, if you look at the top ten in the league. I would dare say the two surprises are Detroit at four, Vancouver at six. Every other team you expect them to be a playoff contender, Vegas, Boston, Colorado, Dallas, Rangers, Toronto, Tampa, and New Jersey. So a great start to the season for the Vancouver Canucks. I don't think anyone's complaining. That's going to be very um, exciting to see what they can do on this homestand. They are playing at home on Friday against St. Louis, at home on Saturday against the Rangers, and then at home on Tuesday against Nashville. Then they pop out weird for a one game road trip to San Jose on the fourth and then back, uh, sorry, on the second and then back for another two home games, Dallas on the fourth and then Edmonton on the sixth. So let me do my mid show sponsor read now. I know we're a couple of minutes early, but I can't go too late on Tuesday nights. And then I'll turn it over to you. There's 115 in here, which is amazing. Thank you everyone for being here. I know you guys get happy when the Canucks win. So let's go. Shout out to my sponsors, Van City Experts Real Estate. Contact Jason Lim and his team for all of your real estate needs. Shout out to my secondary sponsor, Perform and Transform Personal Training Weight Loss. Check them out at ptform.com. Thank you to Gassy Jack Art, maker of this fine artwork. Thank you to Monkey Nine Brewing, my eternal sponsor. And thank you to Vessi Footwear. Use the link tinyurl.com slash Vessi Clay receive a free pair of socks off of your next purchase of Vessi shoes. Speaking of Vessi, I want to show you real quick that they um, sent me uh, two new things, which uh, I'm not the really, I'm not the best model, even though I am the founder of the GLCPC, but it's kind of cool that they sent me this. Um, so it is a brand new jacket. It's called the overcast jacket. And a fanny pack, or fancy name for it, is their Sherline belt bag. So um, this was me trying to be a model. That was me uh, on my lunch break today, uh, taking a quick picture in the rain. So it's nice. Uh, I actually really like it. The, the jacket's very comfortable, and it's waterproof, which is the main thing. So that was outside today, and this was yesterday in my home studio. So that was me trying to be a cool model. I, I, I'm not sure if it's working, but uh, yes. <laughs> mid show reminder to all of you to subscribe thank you please and thank you to like the video to leave a donation 
to gift a membership, to upgrade a membership or become your own member. And if you're listening on a podcast platform, make sure you rate and review. I want to recognize this one from Carol, this, this donation, and then I'll get to a couple of other things real quick. So let's recognize that right now. So $5 donation from Camille thank you. says, here's some money for cough drops. I sure hope you get better soon, my friend. God bless and take care. Thank you, Carol. Yes. Um, my, my hope is to get, you know, it, it's kind of, it doesn't suck. It's always great to pray, but I can have a late night at the church, but I'm going to really take it easy and stay warm uh, in, in the chapel. And no, Adam, there's no bikini line coming soon. I would not want to lose all 10,000 of my subscribers in one day, but thank you for, Thank you for the, the vote of confidence. <laughs> a couple of other things before I get to all of your comments. Um, don't forget, if you're listening, looking for Canucks tickets, and I've sold to many of you from this community, send me an email, canuckclay at gmail.com, and I'll send you my ticket list. Don't forget that uh, my shows are tonight, like right now. Tomorrow, members only. It's one of, we do two of these now a month. So tomorrow is members only at 11. So I'm not going to do members and then regular stream, just members only tomorrow night at 11 o'clock. I will post the link by dinner time in, in the, on the community tab. So look for the link there. That's for members only. And then back to everyone on Thursday. Finally, I want to invite you one more time to consider going to this road trip. It's on Friday, November the 24th. It's a road trip with other Canucks fans to see Vancouver play against the Seattle Kraken at Climate Pledge. And the package is $650 total. And for that $650, you get the bus ride to and from Seattle, from downtown Vancouver. You get one night hotel stay in downtown Seattle. And most importantly, you get a ticket to the Canucks versus Kraken game. Very expensive ticket in Seattle. Trust me, I know. And you get all three of those things for $650 Canadian. It sounds expensive, but it's a really, really good deal. I think when I added it up, it's about 750 Canadian if you try to piece everything together. And the, the cool part of it is you go with other Canucks fans as well. Crazy P is going to be there. I am going to be there as well. And if that's not enough for you to go, then then I don't know what is. So if you're interested, contact Neil Chark at neilc at uniglobecarefree.ca. Again, that's Neil Chark, Neil C at uniglobecarefree. .ca. would love for you to come on this trip. We get to hang out together. We might not sit together on the bus because I'll probably sit next to my son or my wife, whoever comes with me, but uh, we'll have time to hang out in Seattle together and talk Canucks for the entire trip. So once again, Neil C at uniglobecarefree.ca if you're interested in going to that. All right, we got 20 minutes. Let's go with your questions. Let's go with your comments and I'll get to as many of them as I can. Ashish said, oh, actually, before I get to that, I got to recognize um, a couple, a couple, um, at least one more, one more gener uh, generous donation. And that comes from Adam. <laughs> Adam gifts one Canuck Claim membership. Thank you, Adam. And that franchise membership goes to Neil Otter. Awesome. I, Neil, one of my new friends. Glad that Neil gets to enjoy franchise membership for a month. So let's give some love to Adam. And let's give a big welcome to Neil. That is great. All right, let's see what we've got today. For now, we'll go questions only just for, um, yeah, just to make sure that we, that I can stay on track. Yeah, let's do that. Sorry, just lost my spot in here. JS says, I've been doing the stream five minutes late for a while. I didn't even notice that you changed the intro. When did that happen? Yeah, um, it was actually good feedback from this community. Bruce Boudreaux, as much as I love him, is a, is a man of the past here. So yes, I changed my intro to Kirk McLean, and I did that right at the start of the season. No Friday Night Live because I'll be coming home from the Canucks game and probably not rushing home. 
what exactly do I do for the church? So as she said, I work for the Catholic Archdiocese and I'm a director in our ministries and outreach office. Basically, I'm in charge of how the Catholic church in the Vancouver area um, does programming to their youth. So children and youth, I work with the coordinators of those ministries. What was he thinking, taking that blatant penalty instead of playing the puck? Yes, uh, Fried Friedman's kind of showing why he's a sixth defenseman, a bit of a journey, not a journeyman, but why he'll never be a top four. Like he works hard, he plays hard. I'm really glad he's on a team, uh, a slight defensive lapse. Thankfully, it did not come back to bite us. It was snowing at the grossest mountain. I did not know that, but it wouldn't surprise me. Do you think Pearson would have buried those? Oh, without a doubt, JD. Pearson, that was that was his that was his gig, man, is the empty netters. Between McWard, McDonough, and Hirose, who's closer to making the Canucks? Oh, good question. Um, you know, ahead of Hirose is, is our three left-handers. Ahead of McWard, yeah, if McWard's not even beating out Juleson. McDonough, there's a lot of depth. Oh, that's a really good question. I don't know. I, I think McDonough has the best ceiling, followed by McWard and then Hirose. But I actually think that the order that we might see them is Hirose, McDonough, McWard, quite frankly, even though McWard got a, got a look with Hughes. Good question. They are playing St. Louis on Friday at home. Saturday, they're playing the Rangers, Carol, and then they're playing Nashville on Tuesday on Halloween before they go on the road for only one game. By the way, speaking of which, some of you asked me, I'll be at both games. Friday night, the 27th against the Blues, I'll be sitting in, in the wheelchair section because I'm on my scooter for two more weeks. So only on the Saturday, uh, sorry, only on the Friday though, I'll be, for the second intermission, I'll be hanging out outside around section 311. So if you're at the game on Friday night and you want to say a quick hello to me during the second intermission, come to section 311 and I'll be in the concourse. No problem, Taylor. You do what you need to do. No Pepsi. I'm drinking hot chocolate and Neil Citrin. How could PD miss? Well, the, the post was no big deal. And then I, I don't know if he was fatigued or maybe just a lack, lack of concentration. But yeah, generally, he's automatic from there. Which Canuck would you say has been the most disappointing? I'd say Beauvillier and Myers. Myers, yeah, you want to see some more some more composure at the end of a power play that you're just killed off, especially when you're trying to protect a one goal lead for sure. If I were to collaborate with fellow Canuck fan, comedian Brent, Butt, who also has a YouTube channel, they can name the chat Clay's Clay's emu butt commentary. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what we call it. The emu butt uh, connection. Standouts, uh, Hughes for sure. DeSmith. Um, I think Hornick's been good. Besser, PD, Miller, all those guys. And I think Beauvillier and Myers have been disappointing. I think Myers was a cross check. Pod Colson, yeah, he scored the, the game winner, right? Yeah, I, I knew what you meant about Gross Mountain, Gross's Mountain for sure. Well, scratching Myers, wake him up a little bit. I, I don't know if he needs it. I, I think he knows he's not playing well. You could do it to send a message that's $6 million in the press box. I don't know if you want to do it, but did they scratch OEL for one game last year, you guys? I think they did. Yeah, Pearson is doing well, Adam. Myers for a can of soup. Uh, I think you want a tiny bit more, at least two cans of soup for sure. If the team does good this season, it'll encourage PD to sign an extension. That's the hope. Like, I really hope he, he likes what he's seen so far this season, for sure. Yes, the penalty kill looks a lot better. I think all the guys they brought in Fillmore, one of their things on the resume is that they had to be able to kill penalties. Lafferty, Cole, Susie, Bluger, Suter, all of them. I think Horvat's doing okay, Owen. I don't, I don't think he's lighting the league up or anything like that. Bears time frame, Jason, the latest I heard is still December and no team wants to sign him now and eat up cap space. So I think it's December. 
Were you surprised that they did a small captain ceremony at the home opener, despite Hughes being announced prior? Uh, I think it was perfect. It wasn't over the top because you're right. We, everyone knew for a month yet at the same time, um, you do want to do something because it is a big deal. And it was, an, it was a nice chance to get, um, you know, a nice chance to do something nice that fans would like. So I thought it was, I thought it was just perfect. I thought the tone was really good. Um, my guess is DeSmith Rob plays on Friday and Demko plays on Saturday. That's just my guess. Yes, I do have my all seasons on. Thank you, DSS or all weather, whatever they're called now. Adam, I'll let people read it. I won't highlight your comment. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, Michael, I think hopefully Bluger plays on this homestand, but he's not even practicing with the team right now. So I don't know. I did not know that the Islanders scored on their own net. I'll have to look that up after. For his contract. Yeah, James, there. You know, last year of a five-year, $30 million contract. So we're almost there. We're almost at the end. Toffoli with the hat trick for New Jersey. His former teammate Pearson didn't score for Montreal. Yeah, and I don't worry so much about head-to-head, -head, but uh, it's always interesting to see how former Canucks players are doing. Yeah, Neil, you can thank Adam. I think Adam was the one who gave you the membership, which is awesome. Petey for the heart. You think Vegas were going for the second cup? Yeah, they're, they're strong. They didn't lose a lot of guys from last year or so. They are a strong team once again. No hangover for them, even though it is Vegas. Quite impressive, actually. Hughes for the Norris. Yeah, it could be Petey for Hart or Selkie. Hughes for the Norris. Demko for the Vesna. Tockett for the Jack Adams. We could be in the running for a lot of uh, awards this year. But again, it's early. It's early. Okay, guys, I can go for about seven more minutes, so get your questions in. I'll answer as many of them as I can. It can be Canucks-related. It can be, I almost ate the microphone there. It can be, it can be uh, um, ask me anything, whatever you want. As long as it's appropriate, I will answer it. Do I see Canucks game their first Stanley Cup? Not this year, but I, I think they're better than previous years. Do you think Alvin will make more trades prior to Christmas? Maybe one fan girl. Maybe, I think they're going to keep their ears open for Garland, but... I'm not sure how much of a priority it is right now. That could change very quickly. You'll be in Mexico when we're in Seattle. No problem, Michael. That sounds fun. Which Canucks do, uh, do you think are in the running to be all-stars this year? James, as it stands right now, I think uh, PD, Besser, Hughes. Maybe Demko. Maybe Demko. Why are we still paying Luongo? Um, no, that ran out last year or two years ago, finally. But the long story short is they signed Longo to a contract that basically pushed his uh, salary cap hit um, to the end of his contract, I believe. And I can't remember I can't remember which way his contract was structured, but it was structured in a way where the league deemed it uh, circumventing the salary cap. So to penalize us, they basically had to... Um, they called it the cap recapture penalty. I call it the cap recapture penalty where we had to pay a fine for like a good four or five years, which was ridiculous. Dry Saddle is better than McDavid. I'm not so sure. They're both good. What will happen if they do get their first Stanley Cup? Well, hopefully the city won't go crazy for sure. On November 4th, Lions play Calgary at BC Place 3-3. Canucks play Stars at 7 I cannot go to either because it's my biggest work event of the year. For those of you that have been with me for many years, the first weekend of November is always our big grade seven youth rally. So that's what I'll be focusing on and attending. So unfortunately, I can't go to anything on the fourth. Dinner tonight was a lettuce wrap. Actually, Gail made lettuce wrap. You're right, Neil. We're paying OEL now. Yeah, Shannon, I'm already sick, but I hope that today was the worst day, quite frankly. Do I think Bieber and Drake will be present at the All-Star Game? I don't know. I have no clue. And I actually like Bieber more than Drake. Oilers missing the playoffs, so right now they are out. Longo chose to retire instead of being on LTIR. Yeah, that was one way of looking at it, even though he's still my favorite player. Goodbye, DSS. If the Canucks lost the Cup Final again, the riots would probably be worse. Kaya, Kaya. Let's not think about that. We're not even in the Stanley Cup yet. I don't want to think negative thoughts, but that's true. When do we win the Stanley Cup? Let's say by 2030. I know it's a long time, but I'm giving us a seven-year window.
the cup riots were going to happen, win or lose, because most of the riders were from Seattle. I, I don't know if they're from Seattle Atomic, but I, I certainly think that there are a lot of guys, a lot of people downtown just looking to start trouble, no matter what. What's in the lettuce wrap? It's pork, shredded pork. It is lettuce. And then I put in hoisin sauce, and that's it. It's very simple. It's very, it's very good. It's healthy. I love it. Ian Cole is definitely a Stanley Cup player. He's a great pick. Yeah, he's solid. Bit of a slow start, but he'll be fine. Oil for the next 178 years. It feels like it, doesn't it? Connor make was in the playoffs. Nicely done, Kaya. Nicely done. All right, friends. Three more minutes. Three more minutes. 100 of you in here, which is awesome. Thank you for being here. I will cut short a little bit um, just to rest my voice. Despite you disliking dim sum, do you like wonton soup? It's okay. It's a very heavy soup, that wonton soup. Wonton soup. Very heavy. Do you see the structure effort we played with tonight sustainable? I do. Tonight was fine. Tonight was fine because we weren't getting shelled. We weren't getting outshot 22 to 3. I thought tonight was fine. They said 2 to 3 weeks, Owen. They said 2 to 3 weeks. Connor and Mick won't win a cup. Do I want talking about possibly being interested in one Calgary player on expiring contract that's not Tanev? Ah, I wouldn't know who that is, but um, Dolly was generally pretty good. He doesn't start stuff. Connor McHip hip flexor. <laughs> yes, Michael, we do make the playoffs this season. I originally predicted as fifth in the Pacific. I'm going to say fourth. I'm not ready to say second yet. JS, my favorite food at the game is carved sandwiches. Far and away the best. Do you think we should do a restart or just keep chasing a wild card? Um, I, I don't think this management will do a restart. So it doesn't matter what we think because they, they're they obviously, they've tweaked the lineup. Basically, their lineup now is guys that they, most for the most part, except for Besser and Miller, is guys that they've brought in and signed. Or, or I mean, obviously they didn't, they weren't here when Petey and Hughes got drafted, but at least they're, um, all the, all the, the depth players are now their guys. So now that the points, gains and points count, how and when do we know if we're going to be in the playoffs? Shannon, we don't. It's it's we it's a, a six month journey because teams get points and you're you're just constantly battling. So I'll do my best to update everyone during these streams of where we are in the playoff race. But remember, we're only six games in. But you'd rather be in second place than in seventh for sure. Monday Night Raw was a better show. Hey Brian. Yes, thanks for posting my Christmas lights installation video. Yeah, I won't be doing that this year with my ruptured Achilles. Although with my boot, I think I explained, I took, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm two weeks away from getting my boot off and starting physio, which I can't wait. I'm getting sick of wearing this thing around. Oilers won't win until they get their, their goalie straightened out. That's fair. Zaitsev, who the Canucks may be interested. Interesting. Bring some size to our blue line for sure. Rebuilds don't always work. That is true. That is due. Uh, Carson has scored a goal already last game. Carson Susie did score. Only a few games in, but I think they have a good chance of clinching a wild card spot. I agree with you, Kaya. Irwin sharing the uh, the falling through the window. By the time we go to the game, Shannon March. Yeah, that's a great point. When you and Shannon are here to watch the Connect Stars, you have a really, really good idea. Pacific is looking pretty bad. I know there's thoughts that it's it's a stronger division than people think, but... It's been a bad start for sure. Last two comments. Myers only played 13 minutes and was a minus two. Not sure what else Taki can do. Yeah, exactly. Is uh, Although that goal, um, the first goal wasn't Myers. Neither the actually were Myers' fault. Definitely not the first one. That was a Susie giveaway. Pick up Zub. I don't know. I don't, we don't have no cap space. For Oilers, it's not just the goaltending. It's their bad offense, bad defense and lack of true depth. That's fair, Taylor. Good luck, Brian, with your gallstones. Hope it's not true. I think Garland could be traded by the trade deadline. Neil, I just don't think it's imminent, but it could be by the deadline. PK looked good. I agree. Tidy win and good night. Good night, Daniel. All star break. If the Canucks are five to seven games, even seven or eight games over 500, I think that's great. You want to be uh, 12 games over 500 to make the playoffs. And I love Casey DeSmith's. So far, he's been great. And yes, Hronik, don't forget, we got to resign PD and Philip Hronik, both going to be RFAs. Friends, I'm going to wrap it up there because I do need to get going. I need to get to my church. 
So as I leave, don't forget, if you're interested in this road trip to Seattle, November 24th, I'll be going, Crazy P's going, right to Neil Chark at Neil C at uniglobecarefree.ca. Moderators, thank you for taking care of the chat, the stream. It's been going well so far. Yeah, despite the streams being a lot bigger than last year, it hasn't been crazy. So that, that's great. And it's a credit to all of you in the chat. Shout out to legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Carol Bovlander, legendary Andrew Chang. Thanks for your support. Thanks to Hall of Fame and franchise members as well. Thanks also to everyone who watched me and Parker on Game Over Vancouver. I, I got to get it straight. There's Connects mm -hmm. After Dark. There's Game Over Vancouver and there's my own shows. Uh, so thanks to everyone who did that. Pulled double duty tonight. And for all of you watching, liking, subscribing, I always appreciate you. I never take you for granted. So Carol, thank you for the membership gift. Adam, thank you for the membership gift. And thank you, Carol, for the donation. As we wrap up, you can leave a late donation. You can gift a late membership. You can become a member. You can upgrade your own membership. You, you can um, subscribe. You can like the video. If you're listening on a podcast platform, make sure you rate and review. And once again, thank you to my sponsors, Van State Experts Real Estate and Perform and Transform Personal Training and Weight Loss. Don't forget that tomorrow night is members only. I will put that uh, link in our membership page by, by dinner time. So members only. And then I'm back on Thursday night for everyone. Then I'm at the game, both on Friday and on Saturday. All right, friends. Thanks. I'm going to go to church now. Hopefully pray. Oh, there's another crack. Hopefully get a bit of a rest and hopefully get better for tomorrow. So as always, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. Coach Robbins, 11. 11 as well. All streams at 11 this week. Did I tell you that when I go to work, immediately I go and hide in a corner? Because good employees are hard to find. God bless and go Canucks go. Booyah.